Steve, investors looking for growth, um, as distinct from yield, we'll get to that. But where would you guide them now? Well, one was we, we looked at U.S. industrials, because we think there is a kind of manufacturing renaissance going on in the U.S. The energy advantage that we have over the next three years in terms of relatively cheap energy relative to the rest of the world is a big factor. U.S. labor's gotten a lot more relatively less expensive. So we like a, a company like Caterpillar, as an example, where uh, you know, they've also been affected by the slowdown in China. Uh, when, when the world starts to look like a better place in the second half of the year, we think a stock like that could be a double. And, and that's a big global competitive company. So we, we like global cyclicals for growth with that emerging markets exposure. Uh, we like, uh, in, the, in the U.S. space, we like banks with heavy mortgage exposure because we see the housing business as coming back pretty strong. I mean, we've been in a seven-year bear market for housing. There's pent-up demand out the wazoo. And, you know, we're just starting to go going there. So companies with these big mortgage books like a SunTrust, we think it's pretty interesting and trading, you know, at a very cheap valuation. Wells Fargo has the biggest book of them all. What do Wells you think? got a big book. We like Wells. It's a quality company. I think SunTrust is a little more, you know, geographically in the, you know, even more exposed areas to the recovery. But, right. you know, it's certainly like Wells as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, Savita? Where do you guide folks for growth? For growth, it's a good question. And, you know, I would agree that, that you know, c heading into the second half of next year, we do see a cyclical recovery, and that would, that would, um, that would favor the more GDP-sensitive sectors of the market, namely industrials, tech, um, energy. Uh, you know, I still think, though, that, that growth uh, could be, it, it could be a slower growth environment than what we're used to. So I think that it's important to sort of temper growth expectations with the idea that we're still in the process of the consumer deleveraging, we're still in the process of the government switching from spending to, to austerity. And I think that all of that is going to, to keep growth at, at, at somewhat muted levels. Um, I, you know, I think that kind of one of the most overlooked areas of the market right now is, is companies that are, um, you know, kind of yield slash growth vehicles. Right. So companies that are reinvesting, let's say, half of their earnings back into their own growth prospects, but right. paying out the other half to their shareholders. Right. I think that's actually the sweet spot where you're going to get, you know, some capital discipline from the yield uh, component and some downside protection just in case. <laughs> and, uh, and then you also get the growth component from companies that are, that are, you know, they believe in their own future and they believe in their pipeline and they're willing to reinvest. So who's in that sweet spot? So, you know, it's interesting. Right now, one of the, the sectors that's kind of morphed from the uber growth sector of, of the, the late 90s to more of a kind of a cash return uh, stable growth vehicle is technology. That's one of my, my favorite sectors. And I think that there, you know, it's cheaper than it was at the beginning of the year. It's got that cash return potential. And it's, it's also got some secular and cyclical growth. Yep. Um, it kind of looks like it meets all of those demands. Right. Yeah, some of those big blue chip techs. And also blue chip pharmas are another one that, hmm. you know, were the growth darlings of the 90s, yep. you know, and everyone knows about the, uh, the you know, the, the, the cliff and all that. Right. Uh, but they're coming out of that now. Their pipelines are refilling. The stocks are very cheap. Right. And the dividend investors that are going to have to come out of utilities and telecom right. when rates start to back up, that's the place they're going to go to. So we right. like that sector as a kind of dividend growth play. Right. And the stocks are still pretty cheap, too, yeah. like the Pfizer's of the world. Right. I was going to say, so the biggest players are, what, Pfizer, uh, Lilly. Lilly. Lilly, right, maybe Gilead. Gilead's so. a little, little yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then a little more stock specific. Or I was going to ask. A lot of them are not U.S. Yeah, yeah there's a, a Swiss, a heavy Swiss flavor to yes. global pharmaceuticals. Roche, Roche and, exactly. Yeah, and Roche, Roche in Glasgow. particular, and Glaxo's quite right. large. And I, yeah, I would agree. They, they're all looking uh, cheap. They're not as cheap as other sectors. Again, looking at it from a global perspective, right. but on an absolute basis, especially for people looking for yield. I, I do think it's a relatively safe yield. These right. are good balance sheets, good profitability, right. and the world isn't getting healthier. 